Okay, so we have uh, finished a couple of parts in the CAMEL program. Let's go on to the third one. Before we do, since we just finished, or at least I just finished CAMEL uh, part two, this is the code that's working so far. I tested it. I can quit the program. I can also get my status by pressing E. Now we're going to be adding another function. Let me go back to the author's guide on how to do this. It's uh, embedded on the chapter five uh, notes toward the top here. Online lessons available at readthedocs.io. Obviously, the lessons you're following should be the videos that you're watching. I'm following, however, the uh, instructions given by the author of the book uh, about Python. So I do believe since we added an else if uh, before we asked it, okay, what are we doing? Um, the, be sure to read these directions, by the way, you have full access to them. Uh, there are some important statements. For example, here says, uh, go back, you know, what we did last, we went back to the inside main program loop and we added an else if, the L-E-L-I-F statement to the if that is checking for the quit command. See if the user is asking for status. If so, print out the miles traveled. Make sure that you follow this logic. Uh, the drinks in the canteen and how far the natives are behind you. If you aren't sure how to calculate that, see the videos at the end of this lab. And that is actually embedded into this lesson in case you need additional information. It always helps to get a second opinion on this. Actually, mine is a second opinion. His is the, the first opinion and, and it's, it's correct. Um, but uh, make sure that uh, you understand what if and else if is doing seriously. This is a section where a lot of people start going the wrong path. So don't get lost here. If you have any questions with if and else if, please uh, send me a message and uh, we'll try to get this figured out. So now that that's figured out, and like I said before, before we get we continue we need to make another copy this is camel p2 you have a camel p1 that does its own thing we built on top of that and created camel p2 on top of this we're going to create the part three i'm clicking somewhere on the lighter side here at least on the left side of my code and pressing Control a that will select everything collect select all and i'm going to right click on top of what i just selected and copy copy is right here you can also press Control c and that would copy as well and now we need to go back to our files and create a new file that's going to be called camel p3 i'm going to click on let's see how let's get lost here i'm going to click on my username and that brings me to idt games that's uh, the username that i'm using for this course i have a uh, camel part one camel part two and in order to make camel part three i will click on the top right blue button and create a new REPL and pick python and this is going to be then called camel p3 i'll click on the green button and a new REPL is created it's waiting to be set up by the system i'm going to click on the uh, code in the middle and press ctrl v to paste v as in victory vs in vampire i'm going to close the left main uh, function so that i have more space and just to check i'm going to run this and i know that i can do a couple of things i can either say e for status check and i have the status check displayed or i can do q to quit so uh, let's go back to the directions. Now we're going to be adding an else if in your main program loop and handle if the user wants to stop for the night. What is the main program loop? We are going to be going back and forth to the main program loop, uh, mostly back and then away from it. So the main program loop is right here. While done is false, while the game is still continuing, uh, REPL is kind enough to show us that this loop begins here on line 17, and if I follow the line all the way down, everything after, basically, is the game loop. So we're going to have to figure out where we're going to put our else if statement inside the program loop and handle if the user wants to stop for the night. And we can check really quick what we've already put into the code. 
we're saying that while we're not done, while well, done is false, it's going to give us a printout of the uh, menu, which is what's displayed when we run the program over here. And then we're asking the user to tell us what they want to do. The user choice is going to be whatever they input. And we've already checked it that if a user choice, as long as it's uppercase, or rather turn it to uppercase, if it's Q, then done will be true. Once that done is true, it will just keep on going. It will ignore this else if because this is already done. And besides, uh, the uh, choice upper is not E. So it'll just keep on going till the end of the loop, come back to the while, do this again and say, okay, well, it's, well, done is false. Well, now it's true. It'll stop. If it's not true, it'll then check up other things. We wanted to check out other things. I've already have an if statement right up here. Then that's fine. That's the main if statement. We only need to ask if once. We need to concentrate on else if. You know, el what if something else happens? So I'm going to go to the end actually right after this uh, block with the E. I'm going to press uh, enter a couple of times and then backspace. Notice how else if is two spaces away at least on mine from the edge i'm now two spaces away so that i'm at the same level so that i can add another elif if you are not at the same level if you were somewhere else then this means something else completely different if we're in the same place we can say well we're checking to see what the user uh, has responded so i can say well else if the i could have copied and pasted that but i'm going to type it else if user underscore choice dot upper so that it turns it into uppercase is equal to and I'll use the quotes next to what to D to stop for the night that's what we're checking for right now well if it's D then do something else so let's put in the D and then put in a colon followed by an enter so that we can have a little function here of what needs to happen if the user presses D. Well, if we stop for the night, then the thing that we're measuring, for example, the camel tiredness, and it remembers that we have a variable called camel tiredness. I'll just click on that. Then we'll reset it and say, okay, well, now it's going to be equal to zero. That way, the uh, camel will be fresh. It will have, it will not be tired and it's ready to go. I'm going to go to the next line. I'm going to put in a comment here just uh, to remind me later of where I am and what I'm doing. I'm going to say this is going to be a happy camel comment. That is that now that the camel is rested, we will inform the uh, user, uh, not compile, sorry, comment, press enter. And we're going to give the message, the happy message will be print, parentheses, quote, um, and uh, uh, backslash n so that it skips a line. The camel yawns, takes a nap, and wakes refresh. Period. That's up to you if you want to type that. If you want to have your own happy message, by all means, type something else. At the same time, while you're sleeping, you're not moving forward and the natives are getting closer to you. So I'm going to add that the native's distance, it's going to be equal to its elf, whatever it is. If it's 20, it'll stay at 20. So native's distance, but we're going to be adding some, uh, some random integer. And at this point, I'm going to type this, but I'm going to have to do something else to help the computer out. The native's distance is going to be equal to the same number, native's distance, plus a random number. We're going to type out random. This is like rolling the dice and getting a, uh, a new number added to the uh, result that we don't know what it's going to be. Uh, the way that we select the uh, range for the random rate for the random number is going to be rand range range sorry and uh, give it the range somewhere between 7 and 15 and 15 any random number that it comes up with we want it to be between 7 and 15 
the random module and the rand random range uh, method are explained in the book. Uh, I have added some links to your chapter five notes. There is the uh, random module. If you click on that, it'll explain to you what that does. And all of these other things that it lists below that are just different methods, one of them being random range. Uh, but Python has a built-in module that you can use to make random numbers, just like it has a module to deal with math. It has one separately that all it does is pick up, you know, help us with random modules, random numbers rather. The random module has all these methods, and the one we're going to be using right now is the rand range because that returns a random number between the given range. We don't want to add a hundred miles. We don't want to add just one mile. We want to add somewhere between seven and fifteen miles. So that's how how uh, much more the uh, bad guys can catch up on you while your camel is sleeping. Your camel needs to be sleeping every now and again, though, otherwise it will not make it to the end of the race or the end of the game. This is how we do it. First, we import random. and That's something that I have to do right now. I'm going to go back to my code. And just like we imported the math on the other program, I'm going to go all the way to the very top the very first line I press enter a couple of times and then I'm going to say import random that way the uh, computer will know that it knows how to do random numbers when the program begins to run okay so let's scroll down and get back to the code here is native's distance is equal to itself whatever it is if it's 10 it will be 10 plus a random number between 7 and 15. If I were asking you as just a regular person, hey, pick a number between 7 and 15, you wouldn't say 1, you wouldn't say 2,000. Hopefully you would say 8, uh, 10, 14, maybe even 7 and 15. That's what we're asking the computer to do so that the natives advance a little bit while you're stopping for, uh, to take a rest. Something that I like to add, and I don't, I'm not sure, maybe the author is not asking for this, but I'd like to give a status to the user while things change. So I'm going to go to the next line after selecting that random number. And I'm going to remind the user, the player, if to print something here, print that um, open parentheses, open quotes, and that they have so many drinks in their canteen still, drinks in canteen, colon, space, and then close the, um, the quote, and do a comma to separate the values, and type in drinks. That way it'll tell you how many drinks you have left. At the end of the line, I'll press enter to go to the next one, and I will now also, since something else has changed, I'll open up the print and parentheses quote and tell the user that the natives are now at a different distance. So I'll do a space, a quote, and a comma. And now that uh, the, uh, the uh, distance has changed, I'm going to say that we have so many miles that have been traveled, miles underscore travel, minus the natives distance. Comma, and then quote miles behind you. And I know that that's a real mess right now. What I've typed, the uh, program is trying to be a little bit too helpful, and the uh, type is too big. Okay, so let me delete the spaces that I don't need. The natives are so many miles behind you. Are quote oh that's what i type uh that should be a comma there instead i typed an m uh comma miles underscore traveled minus the natives distance comma quote and then miles behind you what else do i need to do well there might be other things but for now if the uh, player says we will need to take a rest the camel will be refreshed the tiredness will go down to zero and i will get the message saying that the camel yawns it takes a nap or it's refreshed the uh, natives will have advanced a little bit and will be informed of what's going on. We already have the user choice dot upper method so that even if we put in a lowercase d, that uh, will also work. I'm going to click on the run button and I have a syntax error, which I've been expecting to get syntax errors throughout. I haven't gotten too many so far. 
let's uh, debug this uh, on line 45, which is right there. So it's telling me, and I can see it right away without having to read it too much. It says line 45, uh, invalid syntax. This is a syntax error. And usually that means that something is misspelled or mistyped. And sure enough here, I uh, put in a quote when I meant to actually, rather I put in a colon and I meant to type a quote. So I'll replace that with just a quote. If it doesn't, if it lets me, okay, here you go. Quotes, the natives are quote, comma, mouse, underscore traveled minus natives distance, comma, miles behind you. So I have one too many quotes in there as well. And I'll retype that, correct it, and I think that this should be okay. Uh, I might end up with too many spaces, but let's see what happens if I run. I know that I can get, well, let's not go too fast. We have another syntax error, this one also on line 45. And I see that I have mouse underscore travel minus native distance, which is, should be. And I should let the uh, editor actually do this for me, because as soon as I type in natives, it says native distance, and I can click that, select it. I'll run one more time. And now I get my uh, options to play. I know that I can get a status check, which I just got, but I'll get one again just to test it. And now I have added a new subroutine, which is D. We're going to stop for the night. The uh, game tells me that the camel yawns, comma, takes a nap, and wakes refreshed. I uh, have three drinks in the canteen, and the natives are 13 miles behind you. I notice that I do have those extra spaces here, and I can fix those pretty quickly by deleting the extra space that I have just behind the, uh, or rather right after the quote for miles, and then right behind the quote here. So the natives are, quote, the program will automatically put in another space. Same thing at the other end. I'm going to stop the program and run it again, and do the same thing. I'm going to tell it to stop for the night. And the camel yawns, takes a nap, and wakes refreshed. The drinks in the canteen are three. The natives are 12 miles behind you. Notice that the last time, I think it told us that there were 15 miles because it's a different number. It's a random number. That's how random numbers work. Let's say that now I rest again. The uh, camel yawns again. We still have three drinks in the canteen, and the natives are now 12 miles behind us. And this can keep on happening as long as we tell it to rest and rest. But if we rest too much, notice how now the natives are getting way too close. So close, in fact, that the numbers become negative. So, at least for now, though, just uh, giving the uh, instruction once, the option to rest works. Uh, we have created a new Camel Part 3 program. Make sure that uh, everything is correct and working. Uh, be sure to uh, copy the the URL, and this is what you need to turn in for this assignment. We'll move on to the next uh, the next uh, command in the next video.